Oh, wait, I'm gonna do that. Our video up here. Here. Well, have the young Gelato Mocha. all. Yes. What's this? Mm. And oh no, sorry. All right. Um, here's what I'm doing. Let's start off with the share whispering. Uh, today, I'm just kind of jump right into this. Today, um, when speaking with people, I said either good morning or Boketov, Shavuotov. And then followed it up by with, it's really not. Uh, we have just gone through and we continue to go through what is likely the worst day or two so far in the history of modern Israel. Uh, it's, it can be debated. We're talking uh, the amount of civilians, Shalonida, that have been murdered, civilians and soldiers have been murdered, civilians and soldiers have been taken captive. Um, talking genocide, we're talking, uh, you just name the word. Uh, it's been horrific. And um, what I decided I'd like to do tonight, we're going to have class. But I want to just kind of give a little bit of introduction to a couple of things, say a few words, then to follow it up with um, Tilim, say a couple of Prakim and Tilim together, Tila for the soldiers and all the Kohota Bitajon, all the security people who are watching over us. And uh, Davin, this this shear is is dedicated to the refuah shlema of all the p'suim, all those who have been injured, and with the tefillah that all those who are out there doing what they can to protect us, you and me, and the whole country, will come back to shalom. Not just come back. Coming back is one thing, but come back to shalom and shalem and shlemim. You need to come back whole, complete, and not God forbid some uh, damaged or hurt. I want to show you something that occurred to me this morning. Um, I I was away. I would have normally have asked you how was your chag. Talk about my chag. It's not appropriate tonight at all. Um, but I was away from Malaya Dumim for eight days and came back. Went back to my show this morning. And normally when I've been away or anyone who davens regularly in that show, it comes back. Oh, Shalom Aleichem. How are you? Welcome. Walk in the show. Nothing. Nobody says anything. It was just their heads are down and so like nodding. And I got one uh, Baruch Haba. That was it. And it brought me to this. You'll see on your screen a halacha that you're aware of already. On Tisha B'Av, we know, You're not allowed to say hello to your friend on Tisha B'Av. And I always understood that was a halacha. That's how we conduct ourselves because Shilat Shalom means how are you? Even Rash, even uh, Mishnah Bura says you don't say it's Safra Tava, you don't need to say good morning. It's a form of like uh, not just nimus or how you get along with people nicely, but it's also inquiring to, as to how someone is. Because in the time when the Beit Hamikdash is destroyed, and I tell you that we are commemor we were commemorating the day that Beit Hamikdash was just destroyed. What do you mean? How are you? What does that even mean? Of course, you're terrible. No, we are 2,000 years almost after the destruction of Beit HaMikdash, and for many of us, it still it still hurts the day of, of Tisha B'Av, but I can't say that's true for a lot of people, for everybody. It's, it's just a fast day. We missed the Beit HaMikdash, whatever it might be, but for some, some it's very significant. And I came into Shul this morning, I thought about this halacha. I, I've had difficulty saying good good morning to people, good afternoon, uh, because it feels like Tisha B'Av um, uh, on steroids. It's a national Tisha B'Av. It's a different type of destruction. We know that there are two fast days <clears throat> that are 25 hours long. One is Yom Kippur, which we just had recently. And the other is Tisha B'Av, which we'll never have again, Bezrat Hashem. One celebrates, commemorates the destruction of the physical Beit HaMikdash, which is the ninth day of Av. And I believe that the other one commemorates the destruction 
of our our spiritual Beit Hamikdash inside of us. Torah says, We are charged with having and building the Ki'ilu inside of ourselves, our own Beit HaMikdash. And by us, when, when, in our Tisha B'Av, our day, where we are commemorating this, this terrible day, tragedy of Tisha B'Av, some of those same feelings are going through me personally today, and I know that others as well. Uh, there's no one here in the country that's not touched one way or another by this, uh, whether it's your children or someone else or your neighbors or someone who's been called up. Uh, there have been, God forbid, already shaloni any more been horrific amounts of casualties already. Again, as I said before, some of you came on, uh, both civilians and and uh, and uh, people from the army. Um, we're at a very difficult time. The the Navi or Miyahu says, Eit tzara il Yaakov. It is a, it's a time of tzara for Yaakov. What does that mean? It means that we are as a nation in trouble at the moment. I posted on Facebook some idea yesterday, or I don't remember what I posted it. That it's yes, we we need to turn to Hashem, and that's what we're going to do in a moment to have to Hashem also about our our uh, situation, and we need Hashem's help. But at the same time, we also have to work on our Ben Adam Lechaveiro, and in some cases, the Adam Lechaveiro is more important. Meaning how we deal with each other is more important how we deal with Hashem. I said in, in this this past week, I made a comment that we can easily proactively be good at being Adam Lamakom. It's easy. Okay, I have to remember after Dav and after Marit, but until and after Marit, like Shabbat candles, Mechala, whatever it is, but to proactively be good at being Adam Lamakavero to be good at how we deal with each other, we have to really think sometimes. I'm not talking about holding the door open for somebody. I'm talking about actually helping somebody who needs help. Right now, the entire country is filled with 8 million plus people, can your boo, who need help. They need a shoulder to cry on. They need someone to talk to. They need someone to yell and scream at. We all do. Um, we need to be there for each other. I don't care what a person's politics are, if they're right or they're left wing or they're religious, they're not religious, because as you all know, Hamas doesn't care, Hitler didn't care, all of our all of our enemies over the years did not care. One of my granddaughters said to me today, is this like Paro wanting to kill the Jews? I said, yes. I said, we unfortunately always have people, it's in the age-appropriate way, that we always have, unfortunately, someone who wants to harm us. But I said, very important, he says, yeah, and Hashem saved us then, he's going to save us now. I thought that was very brilliant for Hashem coming from a six-year-old. And it's true, that's that's emunah pshuta. It's this simple, raw emunah in Hashem. And yes, it's easy to talk about, but it's difficult to put into practice. So this idea of it feeling like Tisha B'Av, unfortunately, for more than one day already, uh, permeates a lot of people. I've asked other people if they felt this way. So what I want to do, I'm keep putting on the screen one, and then the next screen will be another one, a paragraph of Tilim, a paragraph of Tilim. And I'm going to read it. I'll read it out loud slowly, and then feel free to read it along. Um, i sorry, I did not put the English up here. Um, so we're going to read this together. This is for the Zechut for Refuah for all those who have been injured, all those who are mentally, uh, uh, mentally and physically affected by what's going on it's also for our nation we need it as a people and uh let's dive in Adonai Oshia, a Melech Ya'aneinu, Viyon Koreinu. Before we read the next one, I just want to point out to you, this is a class in Tefillah, so it's very appropriate. This sentence here, this pasuk, says they come with their they come with their chariots, 
and they come with their horses, but we come with the name of God. Okay, so that almost sounds like, look, you can bring your tanks and you can bring your, your RPGs and everything, but we got God on our side. And yes, that's what it means, but it doesn't mean that only. It means they come with their chariots and they come with their horses, but we come with our chariots and we come with our horses and we have Hashem on our side. So we have we have the the combination of having the equipment. Unfortunately, we have some issues with that out in the field today. But coming with our equipment and with Hashem backing us. Now, is why is this happening? If someone thinks they have an answer to that, um, then they're presuming to know what God thinks. Yes, I've heard because of the fracture of the, of the people and Hashem sending us a message. It's a horrific message to receive to wake us up. I don't even want to go into that because it's a it's a fool's it's a Sisyphean task. It's never going to end. Next paragraph. Adonai Tzilecha Yad Yeminecha. Yomam HaShemesh Lo Yakeka Yerech Balayla. Adonai Yishmorcha Mikobra Yishmor Et Nafshecha. Adonai Yishmor Tzedcha Uvorecha Meata Liadulam. I wanted to mention to you before I read this, the Misha Berch for the Chayalim, um, that hopefully still later this evening, I'm going to send out a, a message on Facebook and in WhatsApp and in my groups. Um, the plan is tomorrow evening at 7.30, Panation Well, to have a gathering of Anglos of the community, whoever can be there, um, to do a little singing, to say some tilim, and to have an open discussion, people who feel they want to talk. Um, if more than 50 people show up, then we'll break out into uh, into the library also in the in the show. But right now, I don't have exact details, but uh, when it's finalized later this evening, I'll send it out. I'm going to say the Mishaberach for the Chayalim, for the soldiers, and for all the Kohot Abitachon of the security forces. Mishaberach Avotena Avraham Yitzhak Yaakov, we varech at Chayalei Tzva Agana Li Yisrael v'atshei Kohot Abitachon, haundima mishmar atzeinu v'arei Eloheinu, min ha-Levanon v'ad midbar Mitzrayim, min ha-Yam ha-Gadol ad-Zavo ha-Rava, v'ayabasha, v'avir, v'ayam. Itein Adonai et oiveinu ha-Kamim aleinu nikafim lifnehem, הקדוש ברוך הוא ישמור ויציל את חיילינו מכל צרה וצוקה, כל נג ומחלה. ישלח ברכה והצלחה בכל מעשה ידיהם, ידבר שונאינו תחתיהם, ויתן בחטא ישועה ועטרת ניצחון. דיכויה מהם הכתוב, כי אדוני אלוהיכם ההולך עמכם, להילחם עם אויביכם להושיע אתכם, ונאמר אמן. Which is, it's a real war, not just a mivza, but some kind of an action. It's a, a, a thing that's going on, uh, is resolved quickly. We have to do what we have to do to destroy the enemy. And Bezat Hashem, we will, as we say, Ubeshem Hashem, not seven nights day after the two with Hashem, we will do what we have to and we'll be successful. And all of our boys, our girls, our men and women and children, everyone will come home, Bezat Hashem. Safe and sound and healthy, complete. Okay. Now, I had an idea, which I decided not to do because things changed. Um, in the again, because I do feel still this sense of being subdued of any kind of joy at the moment. Um, I wanted to introduce the next part of Tfilah, which are the sections of the Hallelujahs, or uh, which come after Ashray. The very actually a beautiful piece done by a Hasidish band playing in a, in, a, in a museum of musical instruments. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to defer that. I'm going to play it a different time because it's not, I don't think it's appropriate for tonight. Not, not what we're, we're going through at the moment. Um, I want to kind of just jump into um, this topic of hallelujah. If you look in some Sidurim, actually I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. If you look in some Sidurim, you will sometimes see the word hallelujah with a dash between the U and the yud Hey. yud Hey is Hashem's name, but I'm using it okay now because it's I'm using it for teaching purposes. Normally, if you don't use it for teaching or for davening, you say hallelujah. Because Hashem's name is yud 
Hey, which comes from Yud Hey and Vav Hey, Shem Hashem, that we pronounce Ado and Nai. So some see the you'll see a dash or a space between the two words, the, the word Hallelujah, between Hallelujah and Yah. Why? So Gemara tells us in the second Megillah and Yushalmi, Rav Ushmuel, there were two people, Rav and Shmuel, who are well known to us from the Gemara. Chad Amar Hallelujah. One opinion said that it's two words, Hallelujah and Yah. The Chorana Amar, the other opinion, says Hallelujah. It's one word. According to the opinion there, it's two words. It can be separated like this. It should be, but it cannot be erased because it's still considered Shem Hashem. According to the one that says Hallelujah is one word, it can actually be erased, but cannot be separated. Without going to the whole background of why and all, I just wanted you to be aware that it's not so pashut that it's one word. You will hear certain people, if you pay attention, I don't want to say any names, but I do know some. When you pay attention, when someone's davening for the Amud, the Chazan, and in the morning, whether it's the weekday or the Shabbat morning, and you hear this, them repeating the end piece or the beginning of a uh, of a paragraph in the Tila, you will sometimes hear some of them say, Hallelujah. So there are opinions, like I say, and it's also... And, and either way is right, but you have to be consistent. That's very true with a lot of things in davening and a lot of things in halacha. There are certain areas of halacha that it says in halacha, and I'll give one example, kamar, David kamar avid, u David kamar avid, which literally means you could do it like him or like him. I'll give you one example. You come home from Shul, from Mariv, on the night of Matzei Shabbat of Hanukkah. You have two things you have to do. You have to light the Hanukkah candles, and you have to make Havdalah. So there's two opinions. Which one do you do first? So you could either, as most people do, do Havdalah first because it's more common because you make Havdalah every week. And then you do the Hanukkah lights. But there is a legitimate opinion that says you can do the Hanukkah lights first because of the Chavivut of the Mitzvah, the specialness of that moment of Mitzvah of Hanukkah lights. And then you can go and do um, Havdalah after that. But even though you have a choice, you have to be consistent year after year. You can't just decide one year to do it one way, one another way. If you forget, you forget what you did. But if you think you forget what you did, what might be a good idea is if you have a Chanukiah, then after you finish that evening, make a little note, leave it with your Chanukiah so you know from year to year what your custom is. But again, you can be, you have to be consistent. So the same thing is true here. If you say the word Hallelujah as one word, then you say it consistently like that. You don't go back and forth. If you say it as two words, you say it as two words. Now, we come across a very interesting statement of the Gemara, Masechet Shabbat. We just finished eight days of saying Halel. Hol Halel. Amar Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi, the Masechet Shabbat said, Yehei chelki bi gomrei Halel v'chol yom. My portion should be, meaning I want to, to increase my merits in this world and be counted among the people who say Hallel every single day. So Mara says, wait a minute. Eni, is that the case that you really want to say Hallel every day? Bamar Mar, didn't you say elsewhere in the Gemara, if you say Hallel every single day, you're almost cursing God out. That doesn't mean it literally. But what does it mean? You're cheapening the point of halal. Halal has a special significance that there was like an extra thing. There was a nace. There was a miracle that we were representing. What is the miracle of Hanukkah? What is the miracle of, of um, Yitziat Mitzrayim? Or the miracle of the, the Sukkot? Whatever it is, is these miracles. So we have an extra push with this special halal. To say it every single day, it would water it down. It wouldn't have a stain of strength. So wait a minute. So how can you say, how can Rabbi Yossi say, allow me to be part of those people who say halal every single day? Our answer is, Ki what is it we're saying? It means not the ones who finish all of halal, who are saying halal every day, but the people who say the paragraphs of the hallelujahs until the end, because when we say, that's the end of, of Tilim, it's the end of it. So it's Ki'ilu that we're talking about those people, meaning... What does it mean? What is the Gemara telling us? How significant those paragraphs of Hallelujah are. Because not only are they part of our Pesuket Zimra, 
Remember, we talked about the significance of Ashrei. He had two possible reasons it was significant. Number one, because it has the pasuk of Potech Yadecha must be Hashem open your hand, and he's the one who sustains everybody, or because it has the Aleph Bet, even though there's the Nun, it's not missing, it's actually hidden there. But we sometimes, okay, then it comes to Hallelujah as we get through that. We, let's get run to Yishtabach. But there's this very significant importance to the Hallelujahs. In addition to that, Rashi tells us something that ends up bringing a, a new level to Halacha. What happens if a person's running late to Davin? And I've already mentioned I will give when we get to Yishtabach. I'm going to pause there and give a class on what do you do if you come late to Davin. I also put in my bias. It doesn't say a person who consistently on purpose comes late to Davin. He ties it to come late. And therefore, you can cut out certain things. This is if a person runs late. Car got stuck, he overslept, and now he's running late legitimately. Not a person who Davin starts at 6 a.m. and every single day walks in at 6.08. That doesn't help. Okay, that, that's just, if someone wants to know what Allah is, who consistently comes in and would come over to me and ask me, what do I do? What do I skip? I'd say, say what you want, you know, because you already don't care about the tefillah, that you're going to make a consistent entrance to the davening late. Now, there are people who can't make it to the davening on time, and there's a problem, okay? I'm not talking about that. A person who knows and can get there very easily, but we're not going to digress to that. But I am going to address for a moment. Is what if a person is legitimately legitimately late? So one of the things we do know, he has to say Ashray. And one of the things he does say also is the Halalukas. Now they say them all, a part of them. So if you take a look at this Rashi, when it says in the Gemara that when it says about let me my portion be with the ones who finish Halal every day, it means Psuket Zimra, the Psukim, the paragraphs of Halal, of Hallelujah. Look what Rashi says. What does it mean, Psuket Zimra? Specifically, two of the paragraphs of Hallelujah, and those, those paragraphs specifically Rashi segregates as being significant in Psuke de Zimra. Therefore, if a person is running late to Davening and they need to be able to skip certain things to get to Shmona Esrei on time with everybody else. And they don't have to say all the hallelujahs. They say these two. Again, we're going to come back to that topic uh, in the near future. Now, if you have a seed word in front of you, I just uh, you don't need it. I'm just mentioning. You will see if this is the opening lines of all the hallelujahs. Nothing when it comes to davening, when it comes to the order of the seed word, is random. If you remember, way back when we started this class, and I gave some introduction, one of the things I talked about was the word Sidur, Seder, in the order. So we talked about, in general, some orders to davening. Um, there's, there's the grand order, and there's the, and there's, there's the um, macro order and the micro order. So let me talk. The macro order is we have the Psuke de Zimra, the, set, the Psukim that have to do with praise of God. Then we have Shacharit, which leads up to, which includes the Brachot of Shema, Shema. Shmona Esrei, and then we have the, the, the after party, so to speak. Okay, there's a general, in the micro section, we have additional parts, like Shmona Esrei has a very specific order. You cannot, if you if you get mixed up in Shmona Esrei where you were, you can't just randomly start somewhere, because they have to be in a certain order. What are you supposed to do? We will talk about that. So therefore, the, the order of the paragraphs of Hallelujah, which are taken from Tilim, are ordered in a very specific way, for a reason. So this is a potential, this is a, a possible reason that they're in this order. The first one says, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Shiet Adonai. Uh, okay, Hallelujah, praise God. That's the general way of saying it. Uh, I will praise my net, my neshama is going to praise Hashem. So we see the word nefesh, right? So this corresponds to, let's say, the pre-dawn time. One of the things I didn't really get into is that there are opinions that talk about this part of davening, talking, and I talked just a little bit about it, of moving through the pretty much times of Mashiach into the times of Mashiach, which we find ourselves in right now, quite obviously, I would say. So this is corresponding to the pre-Mashiach time, when we're talking about the nefesh. The second line, Hallelujah kito zamara elohinu, that is the idea of the dawn, of the beginning of Yemot Mashiach, and corresponds to Ruach. Now, one of the things I mentioned once or twice, maybe more in this class, that there are different names 
and layers to a person's neshama. This is not the time or the place to get into depth. Just understand there's something called nefesh, ruach, neshama. They're somewhat interchangeable, but they have their own significant meaning. That means that nefesh is the soul, ruach is the spirit, and neshama is the soul. So they sound like they're the same thing. But right now, just take it from me. Just accept that they're different things right now, and they're different levels of higher levels of spiritual um, kedusha. So the first line connects to our nefesh. The second line we're connecting to the pre of the the dawn beginning of the Yemot Mashiach, and that represents our ruach. Hallelujah, sorry, Hallelujah, et Adonai min hashamayim. Now we're talking about, and in, in, in we're bringing in the idea of Hashem and the concept of Shemaim. Now we're talking about the period of Mashiach already. And this refers to the idea of Ruach HaKodesh. What's Ruach HaKodesh? What it means a spirit infused with holiness. What does that mean? So in the time of Beit HaMikdash, until, during, until the uh, an ex of a short amount of years, after the destruction, uh, after the building of the second Beit Hamikdash, there was an idea among the cloudy uh, that we had what was called Nivua, or prophecy. After the Vua ended, then we had the highest level a person could achieve in the in their spiritual connection to God. We call talk about something called Ruach Hakodesh. It's a, a more spiritually strong connection to Hashem. Sometimes it enables a person on the spiritual level to get. I'm going to use a term, it's just, it's just, I don't mean it literally, but like messages, special messages from Hashem, or can in, the person can intuit what Hashem is trying to tell him. So that's what this level is talking about over here. And finally, we talk about hallelujah, shiul Hashem, shir chadash. This is the time, we talk about this also in the Haggadah, that we're going to know, ma'u lefanav shirach chadasha. There's a difference between shir chadash and shirach chadasha. Don't want to talk about it now, but we will sing before God a new song. So in the Haggadah, it refers to the similar idea we're going to talk about now. And that is the time period well into the time of Mashiach and in the time of Tchiat HaMetim. What's the Tchiat HaMetim? It is the, the resuscitation, the revival of those who have passed away. That will be the reunification of the person's Ruach and Neshama to their physical body. Now, if, uh, and this is the Olam HaNeshamot as well, this Halalu El Bekad Show, which comes after this, I didn't put it on the screen, Halalu El Bekad Show, is the Olam HaNeshamot, the world of the spirits. If you are confused, I'm going to give you like a one sentence, two sentence summary, and then we're going to move on. It does not affect the next things we're going to do if, if you don't follow this. But I felt that some of you may may appreciate this level. I want you to try to picture in your mind entering the king's palace. You don't walk in from the street and walk into the palace, into the inner sanctum of the king, where the king's sitting on his throne. You go through various chambers. You go through the outer chamber. You get allowed to come in. You go through security, so to speak. You get into the antechamber. You get into the other chamber. And you work your way towards the king. In a sense, as we go through Tefillah, and this is if you have a Siddur at home, it's about this thick. It's a Siddur from Rabbi Yaakov M from Emdin. If you've never heard of him, it's in the 1700s, fascinating individual who had a very public fight with another Rav, uh, which is also very interesting historically. But on the top of the pages in his Siddur, he tells you to picture in your mind where you are standing relative to coming closer and closer and closer to the Holy of Holies in the Beit HaMikdash, because our eventual goal is to Dab and Shemona Esrei, and we are then standing, as it were, before Hashem in the Kodesh Kodashim in the Holy of Holies. Um, now, by the way, they changed the thing with, with Zoom. I get 40 minutes all the way on Zoom. They, they no longer give us 45 minutes, so just I got warned now I have 10 minutes left, but that's okay. I'll be okay with that. Um, so what we're talking about here is just a hint, as it were, at this middle part of Daven, this is almost a halfway point between the beginning of Sukkot Zimra and the time when we hit Yishtabach and we start moving into Shacharit. So in this part, the part is giving us almost a, a mental picture of what we're doing. We're getting closer and closer to approaching the king. And we use this repetitive phrase, Hallelujah. We have praised to Yah, to Hashem. 
because we are getting closer to that area, the Kodesh Kadashim, the Holy of Holies, and we are also raising our level of our spirituality as we enter. It's almost like there's a dialogue that David Melech is giving us to enter. You know, I, I mentioned, I think, to, in this group, maybe a different one, that all should go well, and the war should be over soon, that next month I actually have an appointment to meet uh, President Herzog. I'm going to present him as with uh, a couple of my books, my PU team books. It's not like you're going to say, hey, how you doing, Mr. President? There's a protocol. I have to find out in advance what I'm allowed to discuss, what I shouldn't bring up, how I talk to him. He's just a basar vadan. He's just a human being. Um, but he respect for the office, no matter what a person's politics is. You know, He's still the president of the country. And uh, I want to make sure I dress him properly. And all. I need to know the protocol. How do I dress? I don't dress in a T-shirt to go to him, obviously. Uh, does it need to be suit and ties and just a white shirt? Like wear just a whatever it is. These are, these are, are stuyot, but it's important. But here we're coming for the melech malchei malachim akadosh baruch hu. So we are in a sense getting ourselves into the frame of mind as we get closer and closer to Shmon Esrei. Everything builds up to the crescendo of Shmon Esrei. Every time we talk about tefillah, if you don't use any qualifier, tefillah means Shmon Esrei. And that's part of the, the job, so to speak, of this. So take a look at this. I want to read through this paragraph. I'm going to make a couple comments, and we'll see if we get anywhere with this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, she et Adonai. Okay, we already talked a little bit about this. I'm going to take a look in the English. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, oh my soul. I will praise Hashem all of my life and sing hymns, songs to my God. While I exist, okay, I'm, I didn't put this in, in red because I, I want to touch on this for a second. While I live, I'm going to give praise to God. What does that mean? What, what is it we're possibly saying? Here? So again, we just finished saying a week of hallow. We said the following words. What do those words mean? That the people who passed away can no longer sing praise to Hashem. Only we can. Not only can they not sing praise to God, they can't do mitzvot. There's a halachic discussion and why it has actual significance is not for now. As to when a person passes away, are they free from doing mitzvot? They don't have any responsibility because they've passed away. Or are they, there's a, what's the other one? Uh, I don't remember what it was. I forgot. But a person who's passed away can't do mitzvot, which leads us to another halacha. You're not supposed to daven. You're a kever, you're a grave. You shouldn't put your, if you're a guy, you wear tzitzit out, you should put them in because that falls in the category of loy larash. You're almost making fun of the dead by saying, look what we can do, and you can't do that. So at the beginning of this section of the halalukas, when we're talking about we're giving praise to Hashem, we're reminding ourselves. While I'm in this world, I still have breath in me. For many years and for you as well, I can give praise to God. And then I think this really works for, unfortunately, what we're talking about tonight in general beforehand. Do not, here, let's take a look here. Put not your trust in the great immortal man who cannot save. Okay, what does that mean? A person who trusts in this time of war, as we're in, only in the strength of the army, in the strength of man, and does not rely on God, is a fool. A person who relies only on God and not the army is a fool too. Why? Now that sounds almost sacrilegious. We know that we have that everything in this world, we have to do our hishtadu, we have to do our part. And our part does not mean that we're being attacked, murdered, in the hundreds of people, again, Shaloneda, that we just sit back and say, well, if that's what God wants, that's what God wants. We're just going to all sit home and we'll wait to see how things play out. That would be horrific. We have to do what we have to do. So we have to rely on both. We have two things to rely on. Number one, in the main one is Hashem. That's it. Number one. Don't try, but 
don't put your trust in, in, in mortal man. It means we, we know that that man that's saving us, it's Hashem, and everyone who's out there in the field, who's in the, in the offices and the support staff, and everything, they're the instruments, as we've talked about before, they're the instruments bringing about Bezat Hashem, the Karo, very soon, the, the, the win, the, the, the victory in this battle. His breath departs. He returns to the dust on that day. His plans come to nothing. For those of you who were in Shul to hear Kohelet, normally I wouldn't, because by Sfaradim we don't say it, but I spent a week in with the Masach Ashkenaz minion. I'll discuss that at a different time, not for tonight. You know that one of the themes throughout Kohelet is that Havel Havalim, Havel Hakol Havel. Everything's Vanity, everything's nothing, and Mashayahu Sheyeh, whatever was, will be in Kol Chadash Tachat Hashemesh. There's nothing new under the sun. Ki Akol Halechel Haruach. We all, everyone who's alive now, Bezrat Hashem, will be alive now for Mashiach. But till now, those people, people died. People died. So you want to, you want. He's basically saying, almost in a rhetorical fashion, you want to rely on, on beings who are mortal. You can't. Because eventually their their ideas and their plans come to nothing. Now I want to I'm going to take a look at this one word eshtenotav. It's used in modern Hebrew. When a person says yatsa me eshtenotav means he went out of his mind. If you have yeshivish Hebrew, you would say he went out of his kelim. I don't know where that ever came from. Kelim are utensils, but he went out of his kelim is a yeshivish way of saying he went out of his mind. But in Hebrew, modern Hebrew, you say yatsa me eshtenotav means he went out of his his mind also. But in here, the way it's translated in English, it actually works well, which is his plans come to nothing. Again, what does that mean? We can make all the plans we want. If it doesn't work in Hashem's grand master scheme, it, our plans mean nothing. Where do we see this theme? Just before Ashrei, in Yichavot. Rabot machashavot lev yish. Man has many plans. Atzat Hashem The idea, the plan of God is what's going to win. That's what's going to survive. That's what will stand. So I'll take a look just at that word for a moment. I should make this a little bit bigger. Where does that word come from? I have a couple minutes still, which is good. Okay. It says the in the um, in Yonah, in the book of Yonah, it says as follows. When the, when the ship is starting to go back and forth and all things are happening, by Rav, Elav, Rav, Hovel, the captain came to Yonah. By Yom Elon, he said to him, Malachan Yirdan, why are you sleeping? Call on your God. Maybe his his thoughts will come to us and we will not be lost. What does that mean? So Matsudat David says, through your prayer, maybe Hashem will think about us so we wouldn't be lost. So the original meaning, this is the Yit Ashet, is the source of the word Eshtenotav. According to Mitzvah David and others, Minchat Shai and others, that that the thoughts of man and the thoughts of Hashem we know are totally different. It's not like they're different in in like in a quantifiable way. They're completely different in a completely different way, and they're not in the same plan. It's like saying how does a bug think and how does a supercomputer think? They're totally different worlds. Okay, so we will pick it up as Rath Hashem next week. We're going to go back to this paragraph, continue reading, understanding what it means, and get a little bit more in depth. And I wish everyone just, you should all be safe and healthy, and everyone who you love and don't <laughs> should come back home safely. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Very welcome. Good luck, everybody. Stay well. Wow. Thank you, you too.